Is it really possible to build a start-to-finish concept for a K-12 project on Snaptrude? Let me show you how. The video covers each section of the design process. Starting with programming, I'll walk through how to build a program sheet, convert the program into massing, and plan early adjacencies. Next, in the design phase, I'll explore the site analysis, develop massing options, and compare sustainability data. In the final section, I'll convert the massing into a BIM project, complete with internal layouts and external renders. I'll also show you how to export the project to Revit for documentation. The video is divided into chapters, so you can jump to any section you need. I'll focus on highlighting the tools in Snaptrude that speed up the design process and help inform better design decisions. First thing I'll do is create a team for my projects. I'll name the team and invite team members to collaborate with me here. I can also adjust their permission settings depending on whether I need them to only view the project, comment on it, or work on it alongside me. I can always customize these permission settings here. Now I'll create my project and I'll choose to start from a blank canvas. For a K-12 school, the first thing I want to understand is my program. So starting from the program mode, I'm going to AI generate a program for a K-12 school for 2,000 students in the US. This is a good starting point that skips some amount of manual research. I can now go into the program and start making changes as per my requirements. I'll add kindergarten classrooms of a larger size to accommodate some extra functions. I'll reduce this number from the elementary classrooms. I'll add a fabrication lab. I can also reprompt the AI to add functions that I need without spending too much time researching areas. For example, I need a set of locker rooms for the outdoor sports area. Once prompted, these will get added to the program here. Anyone in my team can also check the program and make changes as needed. The program sheet I created has also generated massing blocks on Canvas, and these blocks are live linked to the program. Once I expand the sheet, I can choose to start designing here from the sheet metrics or from the Canvas, and both get updated automatically. I want to keep track of my project's occupancy numbers at all times, so I'll add a custom calculation here with the occupancy ratios for each space. This will keep track of my total number of occupants at all times and is linked to changes made in my design canvas. I'll also add any research notes against my spaces here for reference while designing. This will form my first sheet of presentation. I can copy-paste my program sheet to present mode. I could, alternatively, export my program sheet as an Excel or PDF file. Next, I want to test out these block sizes for their internal layout. I'll start placing furniture as per the expected occupancy of the classrooms. When I want to adjust the room shape, I can lock the areas and push or pull the length or breadth. I'll increase the length of these classrooms by 5 feet. With the area lock enabled, the width automatically adjusts to maintain the target program area of 900 square feet. When I have all my spaces ready for presentation, I'll save this as a view and pull it into my presentation sheet. I can crop my plan, add text, and delete labels as needed. To fully understand how my program fits together, I need to study my adjacencies. For this, I'll work with department-level spaces and hide the rest of the rooms. Just to start the ideation process, I'll use the Compute Adjacency option here. This draws lines between my program spaces that have strong adjacency needs. I'll click Arrange to study them better. Diving into a little more detail, I'll divide the academic block into the elementary, middle, and high school. I'll also resize the parking and sports areas to be closer to their actual shape. I'll move my blocks around and compute the adjacencies again. I can delete any lines I don't need and also add adjacency lines based on my research. When I'm ready, I'll save the view and pull it into my sheet. The best way to present adjacencies at this stage would be as a bubble diagram but I can also choose rounded corners if needed. Bubble diagrams help me focus only on the relationships between spaces and not on the layout, while still maintaining the space size and hierarchy. K-12 
schools are fairly program intensive and require time to become familiar with the brief even before design begins. But now let's jump into the design. I'll import my site to the canvas by entering the location coordinates here. I'll select the land parcels that form my site and combine them. Once the site is imported, I can view it with satellite imagery, toggle the surrounding context on or off, and also check the site elevation. Looking at the elevation, I want to make some basic cut and fill adjustments. I'll divide the site and change the elevation of this section. After I perform the cut and fill operation, I can view the quantity of earthwork in the takeoff tab. If needed, I can reset the site and perform the operation again. Going back to the site, I'll map out the main access roads. When I label these masses as roads, the smart labels automatically assign material and height properties to them. Next, in the site study, I want to check the sun path for this site orientation. I'll use this view to create my initial site study sheet. I'll mark up key decisions on the plan, like access points, preferred locations for spaces such as the sports field and parking, and view lines that help me orient the building. I can now see the massing starting to take form on the site. Back on the design canvas, I'll build a grid to begin massing. Creating reference lines every 30 feet in the X and Y directions helps me understand scale and maintain uniform spacing. I'll draw a 240 by 120 feet space aligned to the grid and assign it to the academic department. In the area tab, I can see this takes up 55% of the department's total target area. I'll reduce the length by 30 feet to bring it closer to 45%. I can start drawing masses aligned to the grid and assign them to departments. Once assigned, these spaces show up in my target area list, and I can track how much of the target area I've achieved. These targets are based on the program I created at the start, so I can design freely while using the area tabs as a guide. I have a concept for an L-shaped building, with the high school and elementary school forming two wings and the middle school at the center. I'll break the grid with the sports field and gymnasium to create visual interest. This massing plan with the area targets becomes my first design sheet. I can create multiple options this way, and each design's area analysis is automatically generated. Another metric I might want to check is the sun hours analysis. Sustainability data is collected based on the project location I've set. Since this development is fairly low rise, I'll use the results to start thinking about facade materials. Alongside the sun hour analysis, I can attach reference materials and specification info to help guide the discussion. With my massing concept approved, I'll want to go ahead and detail my interior layouts. I'll pull up my program blocks for reference. I can directly start placing these inside my departments. Alternatively, I can use the line tool to carve out spaces from the mass. After my internal layout is ready and massing, I can start converting my project to BIM. Taking the original template I used while testing the program, I'll detail this out with walls, doors, and windows in addition to the existing furniture. This next feature is super useful for repetitive spaces like classrooms, labs, or offices. I'll select all the classrooms of this type and replace them with the template I created. Now that all the classrooms have been converted to BIM with the same details, any change made in one will reflect in all the others. I can do this for the rest of my model as well. I'll also fill in my landscape with organically shaped garden spaces. Using smart labels, I can directly assign the correct properties to the space. I'll also fill in some trees. This becomes my campus plan. For detail views, I'll switch to monochrome view and make sure the space labels and areas are visible. I'll pull both these views into the presentation sheets. I can adjust the label size and crop the plan as needed. I can also set the drawing to a specific scale to fit my sheet better. Now, going back to the model, I want to detail out the exterior of the building, especially keeping in mind the sun hour analysis we did earlier. 
For the south facade, I'll add a perforated metal screen. I can dry out the wall in BIM, adjust the size, and add the material. I can also import a new material to my library if needed. On the north side, I'll convert my walls to glass facades. I'll also add fins to manage glare. The copy feature is parametric, so I can always go back in and make changes in number and spacing. This is what the model looks like when it's complete. The shadows feature makes the materials look a bit more realistic, but I'll also render a few views for presentation. While rendering, I'll set it to more accurate, autumn, and daytime. I'll cross-check the suggested prompt and click render. I can save my rendered views or export them as images. When I'm happy with my render output, I'll pull these into presentation sheets. Once the project is approved and ready for the next stage, I can export the file to Revit. All the BIM objects are recognized natively, so no work is lost and the project continues right where I left off. That wraps up the K-12 conceptual design on Snaptrude from start to finish. If you're interested in trying this out, visit snaptrude.com to sign up for free.